Hey guys, this is Chris Dewey with May River Medicare, and today we're going to talk about how do I get through underwriting, medical underwriting for a Medicare supplement. What you have to understand is the first thing that you need to do is call a true independent Medicare broker, a specialist, a Medicare agent that's licensed with at least 30 different Medicare supplement companies. Why? Different insurance carriers have different underwriting standards and criteria. They ask different health questions, and all carriers have their own declinable drug list. The denial drug list varies from one company to another, so it's important that you call a Medicare-only specialist that can find the right company that looks at your health history most favorably. Rather than call the local guy that might be a jack-of-all-trades insurance guy that might steer you towards a high-commission advantage plan or a high-commission plan G plan, it's... Uh, you just got to understand different insurance companies have different underwriting standards for health issues. For instance, let me just give you a quick example before we dive into it. Spinal stenosis, pretty common uh, ailment, pretty common disease that I see a lot of folks have. Most carriers are automatically going to deny that. If, it's, if you've been diagnosed with spinal stenosis, you're declined. But there are companies out there like Medico, Mutual of Omaha, where if you have spinal stenosis, it was diagnosed over two years ago, you haven't had surgery for it, you're not taking narcotics for it, we can get you a preferred rating with an A-rated company, all right? So the same goes for multiple other uh, conditions like AFib, heart attack, strokes. Biggest mistake I see folks make on Medicare uh, is thinking they're stuck on an Advantage plan because they had a heart attack or they had melanoma. It was over two years ago, but everything's under control now. So why would somebody want to uh, move into a new Medicare supplement? Let's take a look at that right now. Three reasons why someone would want to enroll in a new Medicare supplement. The first is they got an Advantage plan and they want to get out. They want to be able to go to the doctors they want to go to. They don't want pre-authorizations. Second reason is they want to change from, maybe they want to keep the same carrier they have, but they don't like the Plan G. They spoke to a veteran agent like myself, and they realized Plan N offers a hell of a lot more value, uh, much lower rate increases, lo much lower projected rate increases. Or they may love their Plan G, or they may love their Plan N, but they're with, let's say, a big household name like a Blue Cross or ARP, and they're tired of these 12 13, 14% rate increases that they've been getting, all right? So they want to just say, hey, it's time to reset those rates. I'm not picking on Blue Cross Blue Shield or ARP. I just, over the last couple of weeks, had a lot of people that had those companies that are like, hey, you got to help me out. Had another 12% rate increase. Could you, could you switch me to a different carrier? You want to do that anyway. Every couple of years, you want to reset your rates. The only way you can do that is to pass medical underwriting and switch carriers. So let's take a look at why would you want to, uh, why, why on earth would you want to leave your Medicare Advantage plan and go to a Medicare supplement? First thing is network restrictions. You can't go to the Mayo Clinic, that's for sure. If you have an Advantage plan, the Mayo Clinic doesn't take that junk. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to switch your Advantage plan over to a Medicare supplement or original Medicare with a supplement. Other thing is hockey costs. Let's face it, guys. Medicare made the maximum out of pocket for 2024, 8,500. So if you get sick, let's say you have cancer, let's say you have, uh, you take an expensive Part B injectable drug like SkyRizzy, you got to pay 20% for all your cancer treatment, for all your Part B uh, injectable drugs, for all of your durable medical supplies, equipment like CPAP machines wheelchairs, things of that nature, you've got to pay 20% across the board. For hospital, you're going to pay $300 to $500 copay per day for days five through seven. I mean, it varies. I'm just giving you an example. So that's the biggest reason why folks want to move from an Advantage plan. Now, I will say this, guys, biggest reason why I see folks getting out of the Advantage plans into original Medicare with a supplement is because of prior authorizations. And below this video, there is an excellent video on how prior authorizations are crippling doctors in this country, crippling them to do their job. Four out of, look, look at this chart right here. Four out of five medical enrollee, Medicare Advantage enrollees are in plans that require prior authorization for services. So 80%, let's look at this. 80% of people on Medicare Advantage plans 
uh, are getting these prior authorizations. What are they getting them for? Usually expensive stuff like skilled care, Part B injectable drugs. 71% of folks on Advantage plans have had to get pre-authorizations for Part B injectables. 74% for inpatient care. We're looking at uh, 71% for skilled care. You guys get the picture. If it's, if it's preventative, they're probably not going to ask you for a pre-authorization because it doesn't cost them much money. But it is a nightmare. There is legislation that was recently passed that hopefully that's the bright spot there. But if you have an Advantage plan and you want to move to a supplement, you're going to have to get past medical underwriting. You might want to leave, like I said earlier, you're on a Plan G with Mutual of Omaha. You just found out, at least in South Carolina, on a 12% rate increase. Keep in mind, coverage is the same regardless of the carrier. You want to compare the premium, average rate increases, financial rating, you need a Medicare niche agent like myself. There's other good ones out there. You know, there's Chris Westfall at Senior Savings Network, Boomer Benefits. I'm not the only one, but I'm one of a select group of people that where all we do is Medicare, okay? It's all we do. So how do I compare Medicare? This is straight from the Medicare new book. How do I compare Medigap policies? First of all, policies are standardized. What does that mean? A plan G for a 70-year-old with Mutual of Omaha is identical coverage for a plan with a plan G with Humana. Different insurance companies charge different premiums for the exact same policy. As you shop for a policy, be sure you're comparing the same policy ladder. If you're going to switch from a G to a G, you want to make sure. You can go to May River Medicare. I'm one of the only websites in the country where if you put plug in your information, you will get up to date, up to the second, accurate, from lowest to highest Medicare supplement companies in your area with the prices. You, can, you will fill out your name, zip code, tobacco, non-tobacco, gender, fill that information out. You'll get your quote. All right? So the very last reason that we're going to talk about is maybe you have a plan G. You've had it since you were 65. You're 75 now. Your rates have skyrocketed in that 10-year period. You've had the same company forever. You're still able, or maybe you don't think you're able, but if you call, like I said, a niche agent like myself, good chance if we do things right, we can get you a Medicare supplement, get you through underwriting, and that's the whole purpose of this video. And that's what I'm going to go over today. But if you look here, plan G, a lot of my folks that, didn't listen to me and went with the plan G instead of the plan N. They're calling me now saying, can you get me in the plan N? And for the most part, I'd say 80% of the folks I'm able to get, get them through underwriting. Because again, I look at a carrier. I look at a company that looks at their health conditions most favorably. I'm kind of like a Medicare supplement matchmaker. Oh, you got spinal stenosis? We got to go with Medico. You got AFib? We got to go with Cigna. So I know I've got the software, I've got the underwriting expertise to help you with that. Guys, so let's review step one when you're doing underwriting. This is one thing you don't want to try to do on your own. You don't want to call a uh, direct to a carrier. You don't want to call a jack of all trades insurance agent that does home, auto, health, life, long-term care. You want to find a Medicare niche agent He's going to look at the rates that you're paying for, and he's going to look, he's got collective data. I have access to underwriting software. We can look at rates in your zip code, and we can apply household discounts if you live with anybody that's 60 or over. An independent Medicare agent's licensed with 30, 40 different carriers. We know that if you have spinal stenosis, there are many carriers that are going to automatically deny you. You need to be rigorously honest, and that's the second step. Let's go to that right now. The second crucial step in passing Medicare supplement underwriting is to be rigorously honest when answering the health questions and listing drugs you've taken, not just right now, but every drug you've taken over the last two years. Keep in mind, insurance company uses, they use a company called Milliman to do a medication background check. So they'll pull up every drug you've taken for the last couple of years. So the majority of denials are a result of the medication background check conducted by Milliman. In most cases, it's not even a matter of being dishonest, but forgetfulness. Maybe you had a tooth pulled out and you were prescribed Oxycontin for the pain for a few weeks. That drug pops up. It's a red flag. 
We want to provide full disclosure and let the underwriters know that that particular narcotic is not regularly taken, but it was for the short term. We, you know, we've avoided possible denials by being honest and forthright. So be sure to get a friend, family member, spouse to review the last couple of years of your medical history. We don't want to avoid surprises during the underwriting process. But better yet, go to your doctor or your pharmacy. Have your pharmacy print out the last two years of drugs you've been prescribed on, prescribed with. So I can do my job and be, uh, and I can highlight drugs or medical conditions you no longer have. I put fires out before they start. And it's important for me as a field underwriter to understand the different carriers and underwriting criteria that each of these carriers may have. You don't want to get denied multiple times over a couple months. That information shared with the MIB. So you're going to be, what you want to do is, you know, common mistakes I've seen agents make, some of my own agents, is not doing their due diligence on the front end. Let me give you an example. Plavix, the generic, I believe, is clopidegrel. I pronounced it wrong, but it's a generic for Plavix. A lot of carriers, that's just an automatic deniable drug. It's just, you, you're done. You apply for Humana with a Humana Plan G, and you're on Plavix, they're going to deny you. doesn't matter how healthy you are, okay? So the other thing is, we want to make, if you've had changes in your milligrams, or let's say, for instance, you have diabetes with high blood pressure. That's another biggie. Some carriers are going to find out, you're going to find that the combination of drugs might knock you out. Maybe you've got diabetes and you take three blood, blood pressure medications with the metformin or Traceba. And guess what? That combination of three or more blood pressure with a diabetic medication, that knocks you out. So let's review the first two steps in getting you a Medicare supplement. You want to research, then call an independent broker licensed with dozens of carriers. Uh, they're going to they're going to find a carrier that looks at your health conditions most favorably. The second is just be honest and diligent in getting your accurate meds list. They go back two years. Okay, one last thing on the drugs. There are many times where someone takes a drug that's on the carrier's deniable list. However, they're taking it for a completely different condition than what the deniable drugs, uh, what the carrier specifies as the medical condition, which could be deniable for that drug. Take, for instance, Wellbutrin. Allstate. Allstate's real tough on depression. If you're on an uh, antidepressant, you're, they're going to increase your rate. Or they could deny if you're on multiple different anxiety and depression drugs. So Wellbutrin is actually also for, uh, to prevent, to help you stop smoking, smoking cessation. Same with Ozempic or uh, Monjero or drugs that are used for diabetes, but also weight loss. If you're taking Ozempic for weight loss and not diabetes, we're in in most situations. Finasteride. Finasteride is, uh, don't have that problem yet, but I probably will someday. It helps with hair loss, but Finasteride also treats blood pressure. So if that's, if you're with a carrier that says you can't take more than, uh, three blood pressure medications, but you're taking finasteride for hair loss, not blood pressure. There we go with that. Uh, gabapentin, which is typically used for diabetic neuropathy or pain. For some people, it's used for mood disorder. So if you're using it for a mood, mood disorder and not diabetic neuropathy, we need to let the carrier know this stuff. Same with Remeron. Remeron is is off-label, off, off label, can be used for people that uh, that want to lose weight. Or, I'm sorry, gain weight. There are, I don't know many of those. But you can, if you take Remeron for, to gain weight, as opposed for antidepressant. So there's a bunch of, I just threw, put up a few that I've come across. But if you're on a drug for an off-label, for a different reason, that's something that we can fix relatively easy, all right? Hey, guys, step three. We've we've gotten our meds together. We got a, a the pharmacy to print stuff out. That was step two. Step one, you found a Medicare niche agent. That's all we do. So you got two out of three. Now let's look at the health questions. The health questions, you know what the most important part about health questions is? Reading slowly, taking your time, being diligent to really understand these questions. Let's take a look at a Medicare supplement application. Not going to tell you who it is. I just assume just this is an example. Uh, so for compliance reasons, let's go through it. So here are the first group of questions. Within the past five years, that's five years, have you been treated or diagnosed with 
diabetes that requires insulin. Now, this particular carrier, real tough on insulin. They say, hey, if they, maybe they have a chance if it's below uh, 50 units a day, but they're gonna, you're not going to get it. There are some carriers that are flexible with if it's 50 or less units of diabetes. Require three or more medications for control. So let's say you're taking insulin. You're taking gabapent for diabetic neuropathy. You're taking a couple blood pressure pills. They might be, it might be related to your diabetes. You're out, okay? Organ transplant, obviously, age are out. Now let's look at the last 24 months. A little different here. They're only gonna go back 24 months. Have you been treated or diagnosed? Now treated, have you been treated or diagnosed with internal cancer, leukemia, melanoma, Hodgkin's disease, uh, lymphoma, myeloma. So here's the thing, if you had cancer a few years back and you're not, let's say it was over two years ago and in the last two years you're not taking any cancer meds, no treatment, you got a shot with these guys, all right? Uh, the other big one here, let's take a look at this. Have you been treated or diagnosed for having a stroke or a TIA stroke? If it's been over two years ago, you're okay with these guys, all right? Have you been treated for uh, vascular disease, angioplasty, a stent placement, heart attack, congestive heart failure? Now, this, again, 24 months. In order for you to get this, it's got to be over 24 months ago. And let's say you're being treated for, um, uh, uh, you, you had a stent put in. And you've been on the same medications, that you, the no medication changes whatsoever in the last 24 months, very good chance you could be okay. Now, if we keep going down, arthritis is a big one. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, it's going to be very difficult to get you a Medicare supplement. There are a few out there that will charge a higher rate. So you got to be aware of that, okay? Uh, and then down here, has a member of the medical profession recommended that you have test treatment therapy uh, for surgery that hasn't been performed yet. And that includes cataract surgery, real easy. If you got cataract surgery coming up, you get the surgery, then you apply for the Medicare supplement, all right? Other questions, have you been hospitalized or in the emergency room three or more times within the last 24 months? This is the part of the job I actually love. I know you think I'm weird, but it takes finesse. It takes thought. It takes just looking at all the different carriers and finessing it looking at your drug list, making sure. A lot of times I do a pre-approval. I'll do pre-underwriting. I'll call the Medicare Supplement Underwriting Department with different companies and find out before we waste our time. I'll ask them the questions. This is the situation we have. He's on, he, he's got diabetes, but he takes metformin or he takes Traceba. It's under control. I, I will work with the underwriters on your behalf to get a policy done, all right? Okay, so in conclusion, the three steps we need to take to pass underwriting, to get through underwriting successfully, the first thing you have to do, don't go it alone. You want to call an independent Medicare niche agent, a broker that's licensed with dozens, dozens, dozens of different Medicare supplement companies so that they can match your health conditions with a carrier that's going to look at those conditions most favorably. Uh, it doesn't really, to me, it doesn't matter whether you're local or non-local. I'm licensed in 46 states. Don't get me wrong. I love to meet my clients in Hilton Head, Savannah, and Bluffton, South Carolina. It's, it's a privilege. I like to get to know where they came from, how they moved here, and it's fun. But if you don't have a niche Medicare broker, somebody that is, that's all they do, they're not going to try to sell you a fixed index to do it or life insurance. They just do Medicare, and they do it well. That's what you want to find. And then the second step, what you have to do is get an accurate medication check. you got to go back 24 months. Best way to do that, there's three ways, really. The first way is to, to uh, recruit a spouse or family member, a close uh, friend or family, and let's go through and look at your last 24 months of your medical history, your, your drugs. You may have forgotten you got a tooth pulled out back in October and uh, they gave you oxycodone for five or six days and that's going to pop up on the med check. Let's put the fires out before they start. If that's the case, let's just, we'll put that down in underwriting in the notes. I'll, let, I'll make a note of that so we don't have any issues. Um, with the medication check as well, there's a company called Milliman that's going to have access to all those medications. So you want to be rigorously, rigorously honest. 
Get your pharmacy to do a printout. Get your doctor to do a printout. They have the technology. It's not hard to do so that I can make sure that we have accurate information so I can find the right company. Last thing is we're going to ask health questions. Some of those questions are two, three-part questions. So what you want to do is ask your agent to... Actually, I do a lot of pre-screening once we go through the questions. Maybe you have diabetes, but you're taking uh, metformin and you're only taking a blood pressure. I need We need to accurately answer those questions. Sometimes they only go back 24 months, sometimes a year. With certain conditions like cancer, certain carriers go back five years. So what we need to do is take our time, read and reread these questions because different carriers have different questions. And we want to make sure that we answer them honestly. But again, back to the medications. If you take a medication like gabapentin for mood disorder rather than diabetic neuropathy, I need to know that. So when we read these questions together, we just want to take our time. This is Chris Dewey with May River Medicare. Thanks for, if you're here this long, God bless you. Give me a call at 843-227-6725. Below this video or a couple other videos, there's a link to my website. And please, below this video, hit subscribe. That way, the next video that comes out, you'll be alerted to that video. You can share this video with friends and family that maybe need my help. It's uh, We're a Medicare advocacy group, so education helps us to empower you. Right, have a great day. Bye-bye.